All right, so are you excited to see what this new modem is? Now, this thing offers up to 10 gigabits per second of speed. Now, that's a little bit of a clickbait because um, that's theoretical of the highest. Now, it can do like a 1,000 megahertz of bandwidth capability on the 5G millimeter wave stuff. That's where they get that 10 gigabits per second number, which um, is true. That is the theoretical best, but in reality, you're not going to get that kind of speed um, at least at uh, most places around the U.S. Uh, or even in places that have full millimeter capability. But it does offer a lot of promise. So I'm going to go over this Snapdragon X65 modem. So that's just the modem that's inside this Chester Cheetah. The This is a Chester Cheetah V2. The Chester Cheetah V1, so the version 1. That one has an X62 in it, which is just a previous generation of this um, 5G modem. And in fact, you can get the X65 in either of these. Uh, Chester Tech Repair still makes or sells both of these um, units. Um, and it's kind of a preference of which one you want. If we look here on my tablet, we can see what um, the options are here. All right, and then as a YouTuber, I must put a quick plug and say this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. Please consider hitting that like button down below if you like this, and then also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to check out my other videos on 5G, Wi-Fi, smart home, outdoor uh, tools and equipment, and other things that I do cover around my property. All right, so now, of course, remember, I do have a discount code. It gets you $45 off any of these new products here on Chester Tech Repairs that you just type in during checkout. Now, this one is the V1 version, and you can see now there is an option for the new SDX65. And I think that adds, it looks like 100 bucks to the unit to get this one. If you would go over to the V2, I'll touch on a little bit of the difference between the V1 and the V2, but I'll maybe do another video in the future on it. I think the main thing is that it gets you a, um, a dual SIM slot, so you have another SIM card you can put it on. It's just one modem, so it can't use two at the same time, but you can toggle between the SIM cards. Uh, it does have AX3000 Wi-Fi, so they're both Wi-Fi 6 units, but this one has AX3000 Wi-Fi, that one has AX1800. And I think the other notable difference is the um, port here in blue on the V2 is 2.5 gig capable whereas the V1 is just uh, one gig capable. So it has some capabilities there that uh, might be nice for me. I actually, um, you know, I don't get over a gig of speed, so the 2.5 doesn't help me. And I typically use one SIM card, so it's not that big of a difference. And then I also use my own Wi-Fi mesh system. So um, a lot of the V2 ones don't necessarily apply to me, but they might apply to you. The other thing you'll notice visually here, other than like the color, and I think this is like a square, on the top of it is these paddle antennas for the cellular. These are actually not specific to V2. I think my V1 is so early that it actually doesn't have the bigger paddles, but I think everyone else that got V1s or most people uh, thereafter got the bigger paddles. They help a little bit with your cellular signal, but often I put mine up to a, a waveform 4x4 MIMO antenna. So again, I don't, don't use those typically, but for the V2, you can see it is priced higher. And again, it has the x62 and the x65 options um, it looks like it's only 45 dollars premium to get the x65 so probably if you get the v2 you might as well spend the 45 bucks or consider my discount you get it for free basically to upgrade to the 65 modem in there so let's talk about that x65 what does it get you now why why do you care now like everything that's out there cars and um, you know, computer chips, memory, they all go through generation changes. Some of them are bigger than others, and this one is a bigger one. So the jump from an X62 to X65 is pretty substantial in the um, promise or the capability that it offers. And so to touch on some of that, we'll talk about probably the key thing there is the carrier aggregation that it can do, and the other part is the bandwidth capability that it can handle. So a lot of people um, say, hey, Nate, I have four bars of signal, uh, but my speed's slow. Why is that? And there's lots of reasons it could be. But what I always tell people is that signal bars doesn't really matter because you need to look behind the curtain there and understand what kind of bandwidth the tower is putting out, meaning it can put out a 5G N41, but it can do it at different bandwidths. And bandwidths to think about it as like, lanes of traffic on the interstate, right? You could have a speed limit that maybe N41 has, 
But if it's a one lane, then and everyone's trying to get on it, it goes to a standstill. And then if you have a six lane, you know, so you have more bandwidth capability, now lots of people can go fast at the same time. And that's kind of how I think about bandwidth in there. And so the um, X62 can only do, I think it's 120 or 160 megahertz of bandwidth capability that it can pull out. Um, and that's across, it can do carrier aggregation, right? So you can have 4G signals and 5G signals um, combined together, but they can only add up to 100 and um, I, I, I forget if it's 120 or 160, but somewhere around that. Um, and then this one, the X65, can do 300 megahertz of bandwidth. So about double the bandwidth capability of that one. So meaning if you had the uh, same tower output, um, as long as you had enough signals to connect to, this one could connect to more, aggregate them together, and give you more speed. So one example of that is the X62 can only do two 5G signals aggregated together. The X65 can do three and that can be a big difference, you know. So for me, I've done some testing already. I can hop on N41, N71, and N25 all at the same time and use that as a, a 5G SA, for example, uh, connection. Uh, so that's really cool and impressive. Now you can also do like two N41 signals. If your tower is putting out, um, you know, a couple different uh, cells of N41, you can actually connect to multiples of those or N25 or whatnot. Okay, so I mentioned the 10 gig capability and the 1000 megahertz capability, and that's only on the millimeter wave 5G. So that's what the X65 can do. It can do 1000 megahertz capability. The X62 can do uh, 400 megahertz capability. So again, there are two and a half times more capability on the X65, but you do have to have millimeter wave, which most people don't have at their house. All right, now Qualcomm has um, been kind of announcing this as fiber through the air um, for the X65 capability. That's a little bit of marketing terms. I understand what they're trying to get at and it certainly has a lot of promise. It has the theoretical capability of getting fiber speeds through there. At least for me here, my tower is not capable of that, but it gets pretty dang close at, at times. And in fact, I think they like switch on and off uh, some of my capabilities. So there's times when it is just blazing fast, you know, 600 plus um, megabits per second. Um, but um, other times it's 200, 300, something like that out there. So um, let's get some testing in there because I know everyone's interested. They want to see what the X62 does versus this X65 and uh, perhaps see how it compares to one of the stock modems that T-Mobile gives us. All right, so I've spent hours today uh, testing at different places and different configurations across three different gateways or routers. And, you know, instead of showing you the actual runs in the video, I'm just going to talk to the summary. That should hopefully help uh, some of you guys that say the videos are too long if I go through each step by step. So I use the Sagemcom 5688W as my baseline. So that's the stock gateway from T-Mobile, the Black Tower one. Uh, one of the two black towers and that one was on b2 and n41 you, know, you can check that in the app the the downside is you can't figure out if it's doing any other aggregation it technically could add on either another 5g or 4g connection there but you don't know if it does it or not so i was getting i think it was called good signals what it, 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 three bars for those that care and that had 148 down and 2.5 megabits per second up and that's something I've seen with T-Mobile here in my house is every once in a while, I'll give this slow down. Unfortunately, it was today um, that it um, was active and it was slow. But um, that upload gets really slow sometimes. And um, the only way to fix it is for me to put the external antenna on it or to move closer to the tower. We'll talk about that in a second. So I switched to the V1. So that's the X62 modem. And that one, when I put it on... NSA, so it was doing B2, it was also doing B4, and N41, that one got 214 down and 2.2 up, so it was really about the same for the upload speed, but the download did get a lot faster, what's that, about 50% or so faster for download, the pings were also um, quicker with the, um, the Chester Cheetah there. Now I have the ability with these to also switch, not, not only do band locking, 
so I can tell it not to connect to certain bands, but I can also switch it to SA mode, so 5G standalone mode. And when I, I did that, I really did not see a big improvement on this one. It actually slowed down a little bit to 192 for download and 1.3 for upload in this case. But um, I went to NSA and I said, well, because I'm having trouble with my upload speed, let me force it off of N41 and go to N71. And so I was on B2 and N71 and I got 66 megabits per second down and 17 up. So I really improved my upload speed going from round two to 17 but I did pay for it by really hurting my downloads. But 65 or 66 is still very usable. So that's the best I got with no antenna with the V1 out there. So then the V2, now I did the same setup, but basically B2 and N71 because I knew that that was a, um, a good performance, at least because I had reasonable upload. And so on the the X65 modem, I had 106 down. So what's that? 50% uh, improvement again in um, in download speeds versus the X62 modem. And then my upload was 14.3. So it was a little bit slower than the 17, but still that drastic step up from around 2 that um, it is if I was on N41. So next I did the uh, x65 modem into sa mode and this one clicked me into n41 and two connections of n25 to that tower and that one got 324 down and 4.8 or about five up so very impressive download speeds for sure um, if you're looking at my stadium comma was 148 for download that was the best i could get and uh, this one got 324 and I got about double the upload speed but I only go in from two and a half to five uh, so it doubled it but it was a small number for both of them so I said okay I'm still not getting to where I want to be so then I hooked up my waveform 4x4 antenna to both the V1 and the V2 gateways of the Sagem Com. Uh, you can do it uh, I didn't have all the pigtails attached at, the, at that moment um, so I did not test it that way but the V1X62 Cheetah on NSA, um, which was B66 and N41, it did 279 down and 11.6 um, up. So a pretty good performance there with the 4x4 connected. When I went to SA mode, where because it, it can only do two 5G connections, it only got about 243 down and four up. So I really wasn't seeing the improvement of doing SA with the uh, the V1 Chester. But on the V2 with a 4x4, it actually aggregated uh, four different bands. So B2, B12, B66, and N41 for the NSA connection. That got me 295 down and 22 up. And then I said, well, let me check out uh, standalone mode. So again, I went to N41 and two connections of N25. That got me 345 down and 18 up. So if we look at the overall picture here, the best case that I got with the V2 with a 4x4 was at 345 down, 18 up. On the V1, it was 279 down and 12, call it 12 up. And then if you look at the Sagem Com, you know, with no antenna, um, it was 148 down and two and a half up. So the Sagem Com would have improved with the 4x4. I didn't go through it. I've done many videos in the past about how much it improves. It certainly does not improve as much as the V2 does with the X65. So overall, you know, the net improvement versus a Sagem Com 5688W was about what's that 2.4 times better download and seven some odd times better for upload. I right, so the other interesting point I wanted to test out was what happens if I brought these closer to the tower. And so to do that, I took both the V1 and V2 cheetahs in the car and I hooked them up and you know this whole time I'm using the same SIM card to make sure that everything's fair from that standpoint. And the uh, V1 was uh, able to get uh, up in the 300s as well for download, um, but nothing crazy. 
but the upload did improve to 38 megabits per second so i think it was what 12 megabits per second here the house with the antenna and it improved to 38 down there and when i hooked the v2 up to it and started testing that one when i was on sa mode so standalone mode it aggregated the same setup it was one n41 and two n25s it actually got the exact same download it got like 342 megabits per second versus 345 that got at the house but it got 141 megabits per second upload when i was about an eighth of a mile from the tower just parked in the parking lot so that showed me there was a lot of promise left um, for me to improve my signal more here at the house and i always encourage folks to do that the fact that i got that same download speeds means that I'm either being deprioritized at that level or um, maybe that's what the tower capability is really kind of capped at uh, for whatever reason, uh, lots of reasons, I guess it could be out there. But um, that really showed a lot of um, difference there with the X65 versus X62 was going from the 38 um, upload to 141. And again, that's the same connection, same SIM card, so that's really showing you the power of the aggregation of three 5G signals versus two 5G signals. All right, so hopefully this was educational and helpful. I'm going to do some more testing as always. If you have other suggestions or ideas of, hey, I want you to test that or you know, what do you think about that, then do feel free to put a comment down below. Uh, I do try to read a lot of them and uh, answer them if I can. So uh, thanks for tuning in and take care.